This lecture will cover Trichuris trichura, which is also called the whipworm. I'm Dr. Paul Pottinger. The objectives for this lecture are to understand the fundamentals of the life cycle of Trichuris so that you can break that cycle with your patients. You should understand the epidemiology of this infection and be able to make a diagnosis based on how it presents clinically in your practice and based on the very simple diagnostic testing that every doctor needs to know. You should also be familiar with the treatment options available for Trichuris. So here we are on our map of pathogens. Trichuris is the second of the GI nematodes we will learn about. This is the life cycle. It begins uh, just like with uh, the pinworm, when a person eats food that is contaminated with eggs or using fingers uh, that are uh, contaminated with eggs. These are microscopically small eggs, invisible to the eye, actually very beautiful. Kind of looks like a football with a light bulb screwed into each end. There's nothing else that looks like this in uh, human medicine. For each egg that is swallowed, that goes down the gullet, past the stomach, and into the small bowel, that egg will hatch when it reaches the small intestines. Out of each egg comes a tiny microscopic larval worm. The worm will get swept down into the large bowel where it matures into uh, either a male or female worm. Now these worms can be a couple of centimeters long, and they kind of look like bullwhips, don't they, with a thick end and a thin end. In truth, the tiny little end is actually the head. They'll use those heads to burrow into the wall of the gut, and then they leave the fat end hanging out in the breeze, in the GI lumen. In the case of the female, those are uh, ovaries and uterus, and in the case of the male, that's testes making sperm. Those are the re reproductive organs of those worms. That's important because when boy meets girl, they will have sex, the male fertilizes the female, and uh, those eggs will actually be transmitted by the female from the large bowel into the stool. When the person defecates, if they defecate on the ground, out come the eggs. And the interesting thing is that the eggs have to sit in the soil and mature for about a month of time. That's called embryonation. And if those eggs do not spend time in the soil embryonating, they're not infectious you can immediately see that public sanitation has an important role to play in terms of breaking this particular life cycle. So the life cycle is fecal soil oral transmission. This is an anthroponosis. It's an infection of human beings, although there is a form of pig trichuris that is very, very similar. In, in fact, can even infect humans. Those eggs have to get out of the body to complete the life cycle. Every female will lay thousands of eggs per day, and every adult will live for several years in time. Now, where does this happen? Everywhere in the tropics, both uh, in the Americas, Africa, Southeast Asia, etc. All it needs is poor sanitation, people defecating uh, on the ground because they don't have another choice, and of course warm weather to help nurture those eggs when they're in the soil embryonating. There are hundreds of millions of infections worldwide, and this is an infection for, that for obvious reasons really disproportionately affects impoverished children in the tropics. How does it present clinically? Well, the idea is that the presentation will vary with the severity of the illness. Okay, so for light infections, by definition, we'd say an infection is light if patients have no symptoms whatsoever. Many patients will have a moderate infection. We define an infection as moderate if they have some nausea, belly pain, diarrhea, general GI unwellness. There are a smaller number of cases where patients will present with a catastrophe, very heavy infections. Arbitrarily, we say this is closer to 800 or 1,000 adult worms. Why is this a problem? Because these patients can develop something called a dysentery syndrome. It's not dysentery per se. That's caused by gram-negative bacteria leading to inflammation in the colon, but the effect on the body is similar. As you can see in this illustration, which happened after a colectomy, colon removal, when there are that many adult worms, each with its head burrowed into the wall of the GI lumen, it obviously causes significant erosion, bleeding, and inflammation. If this happens over a period of time without treatment, the patient will not absorb the appropriate amount of nutrients, and that leads eventually in kids to growth stunting uh, because they literally are undernourished because of this issue. It can also cause anemia. Each adult worm only consumes a very tiny fraction of blood per day, but on the other hand, when it's a lot of days in a row, these guys can last and live for years. And when it happens with a large number of worms, it actually does potentially lead to significant blood loss.
The other catastrophe and unpleasantness with heavy infections is rectal prolapse. So this is a patient lying on a gurney in a clinic, and this is the rectal mucosa coming right out through the anus. This patient has had a condition called tenesmus. Tenesmus is the feeling that you have to poop all the time, like you're going to have diarrhea, even if there's nothing there. And that happens because of the irritation of the worms. And so when this kid has squatted down to poop time after time, well, eventually the musculature of the floor of the pelvis has given way, and the rectum has prolapsed out. You can even see the adult worms adherent to the rectal mucosa right there. This is not fatal. You can stuff the rectum back in there, but it's obviously totally unpleasant. So what about the host immunologic response to Trichuris? The host may or may not respond to this infection. It's actually quite debatable and it's variable. Remember, they live in the lumen of the gut, but the head is buried in the mucosa of the gut wall. And that means that those heads will present themselves as antigens to the gut-associated lymphatic tissue. And that means that these patients may have an eosinophilia. If you check their peripheral blood, the eosinophil level may be high. Eosinophils are an immunologic response of the body to worms. And uh, in this case, the case of Trichuris, it's usually a very low level of eosinophilia because the antigen load with those tiny little heads is very, very small. It does mean that it's not clear to us whether we might someday be able to make a vaccine against this particular infection. There does not seem to be a fully effective immunologic response. And the fact that kids have infections for years at a time tells us that the body, at least by itself, not able to clear this infection. There's also a fascinating story around the possibility of immunomodulation. Immunomodulation means that we can do something to change or modulate the immune response within the body for therapeutic medical purposes. And the case in point relates to inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. There's one kind of inflammatory bowel disease called Crohn's disease. No one knows what causes it, but these patients clearly have a dysfunctional imbalance of their Th1 and Th2 cellular immune response. So the concept has been that if we can actually infect patients with Trichuris, give them a Trichuris infection, we may be able to treat, maybe even cure, their Crohn's disease. How? Maybe by uh, changing the way that the immunologic response happens in the gut. Instead of attacking the patient's own colon, the immunologic response that drives eosinophilia might be able to attack something that's foreign. The concept is sometimes called the hygiene hypothesis, where it's too clean uh, in the so-called developed world. We don't have enough foreign antigens. The immune system is looking to do something. If there's nothing there, it's going to attack the colon. Well, this has been tried in a phase one trial that was actually effective in a small number of patients, safe and well tolerated, uh, when you actually give a pig form of Trichuris to patients. Unfortunately, the phase two trial called the TRUST trial was a negative trial that was stopped in 2013. It was not felt to be helpful. It's a real kick in the shins because there had been a small number of patients with Crohn's disease who felt they had achieved a clinical cure when they started swallowing the eggs of this particular worm. I think the jury is out on this. At the moment, the pendulum is swinging away from the concept, but it certainly is fascinating. Anyway, how are you gonna make a diagnosis clinically in someone who shows up to your office? Well, you have to think about Trichuris. Have they recently been exposed to poor sanitary conditions in the tropics? And if so, check the poop. That's the mantra of parasitology, check the poop. Have them deposit a little bit of feces into a cup, send it to the lab, and look at it under the microscope with a wet mount and with special stains. That's called an ova and parasite prep. It's important because if you see these eggs under the microscope, you've made your diagnosis, go right ahead to treatment. Sometimes these patients will have an incidental finding of the adults seen on colonoscopy, maybe for uh, screening colonoscopy for cancer, etc. That's another easy way to make the diagnosis. Regardless of whether you see the adult on a colonoscopy or you find the eggs with a fecal O&P, the treatment is to kill the worms. We have two drugs we typically use, either albendazole or mubendazole. They're basically the same drug, except that albendazole is very well absorbed from the GI tract, and so it goes through your system. Remember, the head of the worm is in the gut wall. That might be why albendazole is slightly superior to mubendazole, but either one of them could work for your individual patient. And then, of course, you need to wear your public health hat break the cycle in the community, enhance sanitation, give people a place to deposit their feces so that the eggs cannot embryonate in the soil, and when you do eat uh, food, etc., enhance your hand hygiene.
So these are the key concepts for Trichuris. It's also called the whipworm. It is a roundworm or nematode. The adults are about five centimeters long and the eggs are smooth with those so-called bulbs on the side. The life cycle is fecal soil oral transmission. It happens everywhere in the tropics, but especially with kids and reinfection is a common problem. Clinically speaking, you're either asymptomatic, you may have a little bit of GI unwellness, the so-called dysentery syndrome with malnutrition and blood loss, or even rectal prolapse. Make a diagnosis by checking the poop or when you see the adult on colonoscopy. We treat with either albendazole or mubendazole and prevention involves improved sanitation. Thanks so much for your attention.